This course provides a working set of analysis data files, meshes, contour plots, and time histories to demonstrate the use of FLAC2D to conduct an advanced two-dimensional seismic analysis of a zoned embankment dam. This course is intended for experienced geotechnical analysts with significant familiarity with FLAC2D, FLAC3D, or previous versions of FLAC, such as FLAC 8.1. In this first video, part one, a formal presentation of the modeling approach, material properties, and analysis steps are given. In the next video, part two, a more informal commentary of the FLAC2D project file will be provided. Note that in this course, that although all data files used will be presented and the overall structure discussed, the reason behind specific modeling and scripting decisions, a critical aspect in any analysis, are missing and outside the scope and time allowed in this course. To better understand such critical modeling decisions, additional resources should be sought at the Itasca Software Academy, through Itasca support documents, or other resources or trainings. Let us now begin with part one, in which a formal description of the problem analyzed is given. The problem analyzed in this course is that of a zoned embankment dam 50 feet in height with a 3 to 1 upstream slope and a 2.5 to 1 downstream slope. The impervious, cohesive core extends down to bedrock, whereas the shells are underlined by a 13-foot thick layer of cohesionless alluvium. The reservoir level is modeled to be 6 feet below the crest. Two numerical meshes were developed for potential use. The first numerical mesh is composed of 991 numerical zones, and although not sufficiently refined for accurate wave propagation, the model does have less than 1,000 numerical zones so that the analysis can be completed using the free demonstration mode version of FLAC2D available. In contrast, the second numerical mesh has 2,654 numerical zones and was designed for accurate wave propagation, but because it is composed of more than 1,000 numerical zones, the mesh can only be used with a purchase version of FLAC2D with the dynamic and C++ add-on options. When presenting the analysis results, only the results for the coarse mesh will be shown. The two numerical meshes used to model the zone to make dam were developed using the sketch tool in FLAC2D. The number of zones set along each mesh block are shown here for the coarse mesh. A structured mesh was used in all but the shell, for which an unstructured mesh was used. The number of zones set along each mesh block are now shown for the fine mesh. Note that for this mesh, a zone multiplier other than one is used along the upstream and downstream slopes. For this model, a structured mesh was used in all but the shell and one portion of the core for which an unstructured mesh was used. Please note that the DXF file of the model geometry is provided in the course files and can be imported in Sketch by clicking the button Import Background Image. If the user then clicks the Automatic Create Edges from Background Geometry, the edges can be adjusted, with adjustments defined through the Set Meshing Parameter button, to be similar to the mesh shown in this and the previous slide. In addition to the DXF file, a text file that contains the initial estimated water table through the zoned embankment has been provided, as well as the acceleration, velocity, and displacement time histories of the amplitude-scaled earthquake ground motions in the analysis. We now shift to discuss the constitutive modeling parameters used, material parameters selected, and overall analysis sequence. First, we begin by describing the sole constitutive models used during the earthquake shaking analysis. In the embankment material, the UBC HIST model is used to capture soil yielding in either drained or undrained conditions, as well as the degradation in stiffness and increases in damping ratio with, with earthquake-induced strains. In the alluvium, the PM4 sand effective stress model is used to capture the expected changes in, in excess pore water pressure during earthquake shaking and the associated reduction in stiffness, strength, and accumulated strains. The isotropic elastic model is used in the stiff bedrock material. General material parameters used in the model are shown for the shell, core, alluvium, and bedrock. Parameters listed include moist unit weight, saturated unit weight, shear wave velocity at a vertical effective stress of one atmosphere, exponential coefficient m that allows the shear wave velocity to vary with effective stress, drained Poisson's ratio, horizontal permeability, and vertical permeability. More modeling specific material parameters are presented next. The shell material is modeled to behave drained during earthquake shaking. 
The drain shear strength is selected to relate only to drain friction angle representative of a gravelly shell that varies with minimum principal effective stress as shown. The associated drain shear strength assigned in the model is calculated using the equation S equals the sum of the maximum and minimum principal stress divided by 2 times the sine of the drain friction angle. Note that the shear strength S will be set equal to the cohesion parameter in the UBC HIS model and will be calculated zone by zone based on the pre-earthquake state of stress. Correspondingly, the friction angle parameter in the UBC HIS model is set to zero. The equation S equals the sum of the maximum and minimum principal effective stress divided by two times the sine of the drain friction angle represents the radius of the Mohr circle at the initial yield, that is the red circle, with elastic response under simple shear loading with shear stress SA, a state of stress slightly lower than that which includes the impacts of principal stress rotation. During earthquake loading, the core material is modeled to behave drained above the phreatic surface and undrained below the phreatic surface. The drain shear strength is a function of the drain friction angle and cohesion, whereas the undrained shear strength is a function of the undrained shear strength ratio, which is also a function of the vertical effective stress. The drain shear strength of the core material is S equals drain cohesion times the cosine of the drain friction angle plus the sum of the maximum and minimum effective principal stresses divided by 2 times the sine of the drain friction angle. The value of S represents the radius of the Mohr circle at initial yield with elastic response under simple shear loading. The undrained shear strength of the core is S equals undrained strength divided by the vertical effective stress all times the vertical effective stress. Note that this shear strength S will be equal to the cohesion parameter in the UBC HIS model and will be calculated zone by zone based on the pre-earthquake state of stress. Correspondingly, the friction angle parameter in the UBC HIS model is set to zero. In the alluvium, changes in excess pore water pressure during earthquake shaking will be modeled as well as the associated reduction in stiffness, strength, and accumulated strains. The alluvium will be modeled as a sandy soil with a density representative of a normalized standard penetration resistance, N160 equal to 16. At this N160, the associated target normalized cyclic shear strength will be 0.165 and the residual shear strength equal to 650 pounds per feet squared. The PM4 sand model will be used to model the cyclic mobility liquefaction response during shaking. The primary material parameters for the PM4 sand constitutive models, relative density, G0, and HB0, were chosen to be consistent with a soil with N160 equal to 16 and CRR equal to 0.165. The residual strength is not a material parameter in the PM4 sand model, but is used in a post-earthquake analysis with the Moore Coulomb model. The analysis sequence is composed of eight analysis steps and separated into nine data files. In the first analysis step, geostatic stresses are calculated without the impacts of the reservoir. A simple modeling approach is used where mechanical equilibrium is determined for the whole model with elastic response. More complex modeling approaches can be used if desired. The second analysis step is separated into two analysis data files that together calculate the impacts of the reservoir on the model. In the first data file, a seepage analysis is conducted to determine the pore water pressures, and in the second data file, the effective stresses are updated due to the reservoir surcharge and newly calculated pore water pressures. With a state of stress determined, the third analysis step checks the ratio of the horizontal to vertical effective stresses and are tempted to be adjusted if unrealistic. Next, starting in the fourth analysis step, the model conditions are transitioned for the dynamic analysis. First, in the fourth analysis step, the constitutive models are changed from elastic to UBC hist in the embankment and from elastic to the PM4 sand model in the alluvium. The mechanical equilibrium of the model is determined again. In the fifth analysis step, the ratio of the horizontal to vertical effective stresses is checked again and are attempted to be adjusted if unrealistic. In the sixth analysis step, the boundary conditions and damping characteristics of the model are changed, certain constitutive model parameters updated, and time history recordings assigned. The seventh analysis step corresponds to the actual analysis step in which the dynamic response with the earthquake motion is determined. Finally, in the final eighth analysis step, additional gravity-driven deformations accumulated are determined if portions of the alluvium reach the residual shear strength. This completes the formal description of the problem analyzed. 
In part two, a more informal commentary of the FLAC2D project will be provided.